Hello and welcome to Complexity Limit's Guide to the Mythic Kelfos Encounter, written and produced by Crazy Puck in coordination with Complexity Limit, presented by Herman Miller. Just a quick note before we begin, this guide assumes you know the fight already on Heroic. As such, we will not be discussing or explaining the Heroic mechanics, we will assume you know them, and will exclusively be focused on the Mythic changes and strategy. If you need a refresher on the basic mechanics, please check out our Heroic Guide on the channel. The Kalthos encounter works mostly the same on Mythic as it does on Heroic, with a few important changes. To start, the Occultist adds Vulgar Brand Cast will now apply a debuff as a curse instead of magic, making it much more difficult to remove and much more dangerous. The debuff itself is applied to the entire raid and it increases your damage taken by 35% for 15 seconds. This is bad. Fortunately, you can just interrupt the spell cast. Don't let any of these casts get through uninterrupted. Additionally, after you defeat the first Shade of Kalthos, the Phoenixes will no longer despawn. You'll need to continue dealing with them for the remainder of the encounter. The last and most important change is the Cloak of Flames, a 6 second casted ability. When the Shade of Kalthos is not active, this ability is cast by Kalthos. He'll apply a healing absorb shield on himself, absorbing about 35,000 healing. If the entire absorb is healed through by your raid, it'll interrupt the cast and nothing happens. If you fail to heal through the absorb and the cast completes, the raid will instantly wipe. When the shade is active, the shade itself will cast the cloak of flames. This time it's a damage absorb shield, absorbing about half a million damage. Same deal here, if you break the absorb, nothing happens and you just keep going. If you fail to break the absorb, cast completes and the raid wipes. We recommend a comp of 2 tanks, 5 to 6 healers, and 12 to 13 DPS. Properly managing cooldowns for the Cloak of Flames shields is really the most important aspect of this fight on Mythic. Everybody in the raid should have some way of tracking the timings for the Cloak of Flames cast, whether it's DBM, Weak Aura, or something else. Each cloak cast is predictable and on set timings. During healing phases, Kalthos will cast Cloak of Flames every 1 minute. The Shades of Kalthos will cast Cloak every 30 seconds while they are active. Since the timings are set, you can always pre-plan cooldown usage based on the Cloaks. You should plan on healing Kalthos to 45% before he even casts Cloak at the 1 minute mark in the fight, which we'll discuss further in a minute. During the first Shade, you should plan on needing to break 2 DPS Cloaks. During the second healing phase, you can expect two healing absorbed cloaks cast by Kalthos, and lastly, you can expect one DPS cloak during the final burn of Final Shade. More on that point of pre-assigning DPS cooldowns for the Shade. First off, do not use any DPS cooldowns on the pool. It's unnecessary and just wastes them. Instead, assign DPS cooldowns for each of the Shade's cloaks. Have about half the raid plan on cooldown in the first cloak, with the other half using cooldowns on the second one. You can do something like all 2 minute cooldowns on the first cloak and all 3 minute cooldowns on the second cloak, but we'll likely have to fill it out a little bit to, just to make sure both cloaks have enough damage. For the second shade, everybody can use cooldowns during the first cloak, as you will be planning to have Bloodlust up during this. As far as the healers go, you folks get to have some fun. You'll want to heal Kalthos up to 45% health before the first cloak is cast at 1 minute. To do this, all of your healers should pop every throughput cooldown you have available and just pump numbers into Kalthos. Any priests in your rage go holy and pop guardian spirit on the boss. Make sure you have lasting spirit conduit active. If you have multiple priests, chain your guardian spirits one after another. If you have any druids in the raid, have them toss innervate on your best single target healer which is likely a resto shaman if you have one. Any DPS players that can off heal should also help especially during the Guardian Spirit. Use everything you can as a raid to heal Kalthos as quickly as you possibly can. While this is happening, your tanks and DPS will obviously have Darathos and the rest of the initial adds to deal with. Kill all of the adds except for Darathos. If you don't kill him, new sets of adds don't begin spawning until about a minute into the fight. As such, just leave Darathos around 10 or 15% health and let your healers continue bombing heals into Kalthos until he hits that 45% mark. DPS should also use pedestals as much as possible. As soon as Kalthos does hit 45% health, finish off Darathos. Congrats, you successfully made it through the first healing phase without having to deal with any adds. 
Once the shade spawns, bring him to the right hand side of the room immediately and everyone should be in melee range. You'll handle these mechanics just like you do on Heroic. Ember blast damage split in melee range, nobody get hit by the frontal, and dodge the blazing surge count. You'll want to keep the phoenixes slowed and let the range slowly burn them down. Don't let them reach the group. You want to ensure the fire puddles are all on that right hand side of the room, leaving the rest of the room clear to deal with the adds later in the fight. Burst down the cloak of flame absorb shields as described earlier. When the shade reaches 45% health, you'll move into the healing phase again, but this time with adds. You'll handle the second healing phase mostly like you do on Heroic. Deal with the add waves as they come in. Prioritize the infusers as they're still absolutely number one priority at all times. Do not allow them to reach the boss and suck his health under any circumstances. Whenever there is a bit of downtime, DPS should be clicking pedestals to help heal Kalthas up. Healers should make sure that the Essence spawns are healed to full and you're maximizing uptime from the infuser's orbs. Keep an eye on your timers. When Kalthas casts a cloak of flames, at least one healer should use a throughput cooldown, ideally a healer with the infuser's orb buff. Make sure you heal through the absorb. Work through the adds and healing Kalthas until he hits 90% at which point you get your final shade. The goal is to make this push before Kalthos casts Cloak of Flames a third time. And just as a reminder, you will have phoenixes up for the duration of this phase, so keep them slowed and nuke them down when you see them. As soon as the second shade spawns, pop Bloodlust. Clean up any remaining adds you have and everyone should move in the melee range. Hold some of your DPS cooldowns until the moment the first Cloak of Flames activates, just so you make sure you burn through it. New card, dodge mechanics, don't die, and you get to collect your purples here. Thanks for checking out our video. Now that you know how to kill the boss, be sure to like the video and subscribe to our channel for the rest of our guides, kill videos, and a whole lot more.